So I have a question. Um, the therapist then isn't supposed to introduce their worldview into your worldview? No, absolutely not. So the, the purpose of a therapist, of a third party counselor, therapist, social worker, whatever, um, is not to have any impression on like your opinions. Right. And so I think that's one thing that I hear a lot about is, well, I want a Christian counselor. I want someone that shares my faith. I want someone that believes the same things that I do. Um, and there are those people, there are Christian counselors and there are secular counselors, regular counselors. Um, and I think what I've seen is in terms of if you're struggling with faith, right? If you're struggling with things related to your faith, your Christianity, whatever it is, um, it, it could be helpful to go to a, a Christian counselor, whatever that looks like. You know, what might be more helpful though. Is to go to your pastor. And, and in yeah. the same way, like I, I, as sort of the Lutheran pastor, I don't know that I'd want a Baptist counselor trying to help you figure out your way around the law. Um, in, in fact, one of the big issues that, that we sort of have when we sit down with evangelical Christianity is that when we are confronted with sin, uh, we fall on the cross. And I don't want to throw rocks, but over and over again, I've heard the message of you fall on try harder. That's not going to work. Um, Jesus isn't a drug. Jesus isn't a pill that you can take to no longer wrestle with these things. So to have a counselor then who can actually help you unpack it in a safe place would be a gift. Absolutely. And when it comes to having a therapist, finding a therapist, that's not to say you can't bring up your faith, right? That's one of the questions that I ask all my clients is, you know, how does your spirituality help you? How does your spirituality or faith or whatever it is um, help support you? And some people will say, well, I had a bad experience with Christianity or the church or whatever. And so I don't want to talk about it. It's not a thing that I'm here to talk about or a thing that, you know, I'm here to discuss, to share, to have goals, goals towards. And it's not my opinion to say, well, if you went to church, right, it's not my place to say, well, did you try going to this place or did you try to pray about it? That's not my job. Um, and it shouldn't be your therapist's job. So if it is, let me know. Um, and so the thing is, right, is that we're there to provide, like I said, an unbiased opinion, right? Professional opinion. Um, to help you get through stuff and, and not necessarily, not at all, impose our values or our beliefs. My beliefs don't matter in a client's uh, issues, right? And what they're bringing to me, that's not my role. Right, um, but to have that safe place and here, well, our beliefs do matter um, when, when you come to me, but I think every bit as much, the safe place matters. This is the theme of, of this conference that we talk about forgiveness, we talk about absolution. And one of the great joys that you have is when you come to your pastor to address this spiritually, he can give Jesus for your sins. He can point to the cross for this. And then he can leave it there where it belongs. It's, it's a gift to be able to find Jesus in the lowest of your lows. And it's one that will get lost if you go to your pastor looking for psychiatry and your your therapist looking for religion, because it's not my job to fix your brain. It's not my job to give you coping strategies. It's not my job to, to do. I'm not trained to do this. I have no idea what I'm doing. You let me pray for you, but I shouldn't do your brain surgery either. So why do I get to go poking around in your head? Instead, I get to tell you where Jesus is. And this is actually the gift that Jesus didn't promise to be a drug that make sure that you would never ever hurt again or wrestle with anxiety or depression or addiction again. It's that he would join us in these things. He would bear our sins for us upon the tree. He would join himself to sinners so that the power of sin would be destroyed. He promised us a cross. And then he tied us to it every day in our baptism that every day old Adam would drown and the new man would rise. And the next day too, the next day too matters a whole lot when you wrestle with addiction, like every last one of us do. You see, Jesus did not promise if you rub some Jesus on it, you'll walk it off. He promised every day you'll die, every day you'll rise, and every day he will call you holy, forgiven, worthy of love. 
He promised certainty not rooted in your battle against your addiction, but in his forgiveness of it and his promise to carry you through it. Jumping off of that and something you said earlier too, um, is that there's no finish line. There's no cure when it comes to addiction, when it comes to mental health, right? There's no point where I say, okay, I'm not an addict anymore. I don't have an issue. I don't have a problem. Um, you're not in remission from addiction, right? Like it, it, it is a struggle every day. Um, and I think the way that I kind of talk to my clients about it is that it's, it's also an opportunity every day, right? To say, Hey, what coping skills am I going to use? How am I going to make today better than tomorrow than yesterday? Um, how am I going to look for tomorrow to try new things, right? This is an opportunity for me to use those skills. Um, and for me to work on things, right? Because, and that's what you can do. And if you don't have a great day and you didn't work on things today and it was tougher than you thought, then you try tomorrow, right? And then it's not, it's, it's not a perfectionist issue, right? Is that there's no, okay, one addiction, that's not a thing. And I think for a lot of people that can be frustrating, right? To say, okay, well, I want, I want an answer, right? I want to be cured. I want to be good. I want my life to be easy. Um, and unfortunately that's, that's not the case. Um, and you also get an opportunity to better yourself, right? You get an opportunity to work on yourself and figure out, Hey, I, I, I got dealt this hand, right? I can't do anything about it. I can't do anything about the past. I can't do anything about the past choices that I've made and I can make new choices today. And that can be, I think a better way to look at it, right. than say, okay, I lost, I gave up. I love that opportunity word. Um, I think this is probably what Luther was chasing when he tells you to wake up in the morning and then make the sign of the cross. It's not a promise that today is going to be a day without sin or a need for a baptism. He says, make the sign of the cross. Remember your baptism. Say a prayer, sing a hymn, and go joyfully about your work. That every single day, as desperate as some of us are to just be free of this thing, our God gives you an opportunity to live free of it because you are baptized and that does not define you. That does not sum up who you are. And even more, that does not limit what he will accomplish through you. If every last person in this room is some kind of addict or another, even if some of us are better at hiding it than the rest, it becomes a greater miracle that society still functions, that we're still here at all. But every single day, God has worked good through his creation because he's, he has not abandoned it. 